Hi, my name is Christian Waldegrove, Head of Research at TK, and this is our conventional tanker market update for April 2016. Now we're in April, it's probably a good idea to do a uh, recap of what's happened in the tanker market during the first quarter of the year. And what we've seen on the mid-sized vessels, the Aframaxes and the Suez Maxes that TK Tankers operates, is that rates have been pretty good in the first quarter of the year, but they have been lower than the first quarter of 2015. So the Aframaxes have averaged in about the mid to high $20,000 per day range, and that compares to about the low to mid $30,000 per day range in Q1 of last year. And the Suez Maxes in Q1 averaged around the mid $30,000 per day range, about $35,000 per day. Uh, which is a bit lower than the 40 to 45,000 they averaged in Q1 of last year. So on a historical basis, these are pretty good earnings, but obviously they are down 20 to 25 percent from a year ago. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, firstly, I think the global refinery maintenance schedule has been a bit heavier this year than it was last year. Last year, the refineries had very strong margins. The refiners were enjoying uh, really good margins because the price of crude kept dropping. Uh, and that meant that they deferred their scheduled maintenance um, in order to keep their throughput high. Well, the refineries can only defer that maintenance for so long. And I think what happened in the first part of this year uh, is that that maintenance had to be done, especially um, when we got to sort of January, February and the, the oil price, uh, which bottomed out in January, started to come back a bit in February and March and, and narrowed some of their margins. Then I think the refineries took the opportunity to take some units offline uh, and do a bit more scheduled maintenance than we saw last year. And that ate into tanker demand uh, a little bit. What we've also seen on the mid-sizes is some, um, out, some um, supply disruptions. Uh, we've seen some disruptions in, in Nigeria and West Africa, some force majeure being declared there, uh, which has caused a, a decrease in the number of cargoes and affected the Suez maxes. And then we've also seen some outages in the Mediterranean. Uh, there's been some problems on that northern pipeline in Iraq. Uh, and fewer cargoes coming out of Seyhan. So that's affected, affected demand uh, in the Med region for both Aframaxes and Suez Maxes. And then as I alluded to earlier, uh, the price of crude, which did bottom out at about $27 per barrel in January, has come back and in March averaged around, around $40 per barrel. Uh, and so that just means the cost of bunkers have been a little bit higher. And as I said before, the refining margins have been a bit narrower. And so that's uh, just uh, eaten into demand just a little bit. So I think those are all reasons why uh, the mid-sized tankers, uh, although still earning pretty good levels, they are lower than they were this time last year. Uh, on the other hand, the VLCC earnings have stayed relatively robust. Uh, in the first quarter of this year, VLCCs have averaged about $55,000 per day, uh, which is pretty comparable to what they earned in the first quarter of last year. Uh, and the Vs have really been supported by um, ongoing high out, uh, exports out of the Middle East. Uh, from places like Saudi Arabia, Iraq. Uh, and we are seeing a little bit more crude coming out of Iran now once the sanctions have been lifted. Um, possibly not as, as much oil as we thought might happen um, once the sanctions were lifted, but we have seen the production there is up about 100,000 barrels per day. Um, and then on the import side, we've seen uh, a lot of crude movements into China. In fact, February saw record crude imports into China of 8 million barrels per day. And what we've also seen on the discharge side side is uh, a lot of vessel delays. Um, a little bit in Singapore, but particularly in China, uh, we've seen some vessels getting tied up at port, uh, and, and that's tightened the supply. And just very recently, we've heard as well that on the load side in Iraq, uh, there's been a lot of vessels being, uh, waiting to load, up to 30 Suez Maxes and VLCCs waiting to load at Basra. So again, those vessel delays are causing uh, those VLCC rates to be well supported, whereas the min size have, have averaged a bit lower uh, than this time last year. Looking ahead to Q2, um, as the refineries come out of maintenance, we think that uh, tanker demand should pick up again uh, seasonally. And so I would expect that uh, going into April and into May, we should see some better rates emerging on the, on the Aframaxes and the Suez Maxes. And in fact, the rates are starting to look a bit more healthy compared to where they were uh, perhaps in January and February. Looking ahead to the second half of the year, a lot will depend on what happens with uh, the fundamentals, particularly what happens on the oil supply side. And a lot will hinge on what happens later this month with the uh, OPEC meeting, or the meeting, I should say, between OPEC and Russia to see if they're going to expand the production freeze to cover all of the OPEC countries. Um, now, there's a bit of um, skepticism as to whether a deal will be reached. I know uh, Iran has already said that they're not going to agree to a production freeze because they've only just come out of sanctions and they want to regain some market share. And there has been some suggestion that Saudi Arabia might not take part 
if Iran doesn't agree. So we'll wait and see whether that production freeze comes into force. If we do see a freeze on OPEC production, or later in the year potentially even a reduction in OPEC supply, then that would obviously be negative for tankers. But if the countries can't reach an agreement, as seems to be the case, and we continue to see high levels of output from places like uh, the Middle East, Iran, Latin America, West Africa, then I think we'll continue to see tanker demand well supported through the year. Uh, and that will also keep pressure on oil pricing uh, and give all those benefits that, that have helped the tankers over the past 12 to 18 months, i.e. low bunker prices, good refining margins, and probably some more storage to come as well, uh, particularly, uh, uh, particularly in China as they look to complete the second phase of their strategic petroleum reserves. There is some higher fleet growth coming in later in the year, which we've acknowledged a few times, uh, especially on the VLCCs later this year, and then next year on the Suez Maxes. But I think it will take a while for those ships to get absorbed into the fleets. And so for 2016, we feel, pr feel pretty comfortable that the uh, tanker market is going to uh, show some good earnings, possibly not as high as 2015. Uh, but compared to the preceding years, I think it's going to be another good year for tankers. And then next year, a lot will depend on the relative fleet growth versus where we are on oil pricing and supply and demand, which we'll be able to update you on later in the year as we get more clarity. So that's our update on the tanker market for April, and we'll speak to you again next month.